Hi, this is a quick demo showing how we can use Torch to make a multi-layer perceptron. So just to type in neural, really basic neural network. Then we're going to use the neural, neural network or this MLP to approximate a simple function. Importantly, we're not going to use the optimizer function in Torch because we just want to show what's going on and how we can take a gradient and take a step in a negative gradient direction in order to change our parameters to make them more optimal. And I'm going to do this demonstration in using a Jupyter notebook. So I'm going to set up my environment using Coda. And I'm just going to paste a bunch of code I've already put together and let it run. I'll po post the code in the video notes. OK, so I finished installing everything. I installed the Jupyter kernel with this command. Then I ran Jupyter lab. Lab popped up, I made a new notebook that's using my tutorial 3 kernel. So the goal here is to show how to use Torch to make an MLP, and that is a multi-layer perceptron. And we want to use the MLP to approximate a simple function. And in particular, we don't want to use the optimizer function because we want to see exactly what's going on and like how does Torch actually work. Uh, so to get started, we're just going to import a few things. We're going to import Torch, import Torch, Arc, and also going to import Torch and functional as F. And also we're going to do some plotting. So we're going to import plot, 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 plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I can tell that we're going to do inline plotting, mad plot, live inline. Uh, next, we want to mix some values that we're going to use to model our function. So we want to first make the range, those will be the x values. So I would say torch to line space or line space, go from negative one to one, and we're going to give it 20 values. Then for our uh, function, let's say that y equals uh, x, this is a simple parabola. So then we can do plt plot x y give it some markers dashes okay it gets slightly more complicated let's add some noise to our function so uh, let's say torch uh, rand so this is gonna make random values so i just hit shift tab bring this up you can see it's gonna be between the interval of negative one and one and we want to be in the same shape as x, x shape. And uh, so it's going to be between 0 and 1. Let's multiply by 3 so that that will be in the range from 0 to 3. Cool, that's a lot. It's going to be a little smaller than that. So if you just think about it, if it's going from 1 squared, it would be still 1. So we probably want our error significantly less really, like 0 0.1. There we go. That's better. So the first thing we want to do is, is we want to make a, a multi-layer perceptron that's going to approximate this function. So let's make a multi-layer perceptron. And to do that, I'm going to say that the number of parameters in my MLP layers is going to be 20. I'm just going to call it n. Uh, to make this a little simpler, I'm just going to make a, a list of layers. Layers just means like we're going to end up putting these layers into a sequential object, which is just going to call one after another. So it'll make more sense as I go through it. So if I can say layers, the bend. So my incoming data only has one channel. So I'm going to say one channel of data, and I want to go to n to approximate functions well. We need some nonlinear activations, so I'm going to give it a ReLU. into another linear layer. This time we're going to take an in because we had in coming up previously and we also want out in. Then we're going to give another ray lu. Finally let's go back. We we need to output just a single value, not 20. So we're going to say take in our 20 values and just give us one. Okay. Oh, 
because it's not defined. Next, we need to make this into an actual MLP. So I'm saying MLP equals neural network guys. Glintual. I just hit tab. And it didn't do anything. Let's try that again. It's a good show. I was by N, 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 N. There we go. All right, so I hit tab and auto-complete for me. Then I'm going to unpack my list and say layers like this. So whenever we send data through a network in Torch, it's always expecting it to have a batch. So we need to turn our X and Y data into a, a batch. Otherwise, if I do y prime equals mlp x, it's going to whine at me and say it's in the wrong format. So what I'm going to do is go right here and say yb or xb and yb, that's for x batch and y batch. It's just going to be x. We're just going to add another, another dimension to both of these. So I'm going to say get all the coordinates and then add something on the end like this. Then I just do a quick check, x.shape and xb.shape. See what this is 20 and this is 20 visual. Um, 20 comma one. It's not really changed the data at all, it's just changed how it looks. So then here, I'm gonna send in uh, xb and then it's going to be okay. And also we can take a look at the shape. So it's going to come out in the same shape. Now let's take a quick look at what the output actually looks like. Matlab play map lib is not going to like that shape. So we're going to remove that dimension now. Uh, so let's call this uh, x prime or y prime two. And then to get rid of that extra dimension, I'm going to say x y prime. Uh, squeeze. That's just going to remove that extra dimension. So then I'm going to do plt plot y x y prime 2. And we have something wrong. Can't call. Oh, yeah, we need to detach it. So I'm going to detach here. There we go. So that's what it looks like. Let's compare the prediction to what we have. And we can give it some labels. BLT legends. Forgot to put a label here. Now I can see our approximation is pretty bad. So the goal is to change our neural network weights in order to better approximate this function. So to do that, first we have to measure the error somehow, and that's called the loss. So the loss function that we're going to use is just simple mean square error. It's going to say MSE loss. So I'm just importing from the torch neural network functional library the loss, this particular function, which is just mean square error. And I want to compare my my batch to what I actually got out of my neural network, which is Y prime. And then let's just see what this loss function is. So it computed that error. Now what can we do with it? Now we can say take the gradient with respect to that loss function. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna say loss that backwards. And it automatically just performed this differentiation all the way back to the parameters of my my network. Now I actually need to like update the values of my network. So to do that, we want to take a step in the negative gradient direction. So we're going to define a step size, or as just basically the the learning rate. So we call it one e negative one or zero point one. Then I'm going to say for name param in my 
what do we call it before? Let's call it MLP. MLP dot aim parameters. And then I can say print param just so we can get an idea of like what's going on here. So these are all my parameters in my network. So really what we want to do though is <clears throat> update them so they're better aligned, so they'll better align with reducing that loss function. So to do that, I'm going to say param dot data equals param dot data. So take the current value and subtract the param dot grad. So that's the gradient of stored times the loading rate, which is the step size. Do that. And that should have updated my weights. Importantly, I'm going to also tell it that I don't want to save my weights anymore. I'm going to get rid of them so I can tell it to zero out all the gra gradients by doing this. Now, if I take, if I look at my prediction again, let's try this. We just want to replot everything and see what it looks like. See if we're any closer. So you can see down before it used to be way down here. You can see that it's moved up slightly, which makes sense. The best way to approximate this function, like a naive approach, would just be like take the mean, and that would be a relatively reasonable approximation. However, we want to do a lot better. So instead of running through all this one step at a time, we can define a loop, and this is basically the core idea of a neural network work is that we're going to just keep running through this loop multiple times, taking the gradient with respect to our parameters, and then update our parameters after we calculate the last function. So basically we're just going to copy the code that we had before and just put it into a loop. So the first thing we need to do is to define how many times we want to take the steps. It's the epochs. Let's say it's 100. Let's say for high and range epochs. Just like before, I'm just going to calculate this y prime value. Then I'm going to have to calculate the loss. Comparing it to the known values, which is the the y batch, then I need to take a step or calculate the gradient, and then finally I need to take my step, which is just going to be like this, and then I want to zero out my gradients. Like that. Right, so if I run it, you can see it ran quite quickly. If I do another plot here, let's see if it's closer now. Not bad. Let's try running this one more time. So we're even closer now. If I run it one more time, each time I'm running it, you know, it, it should be getting as close as it can. And now you can see it's quite close, and we've successfully approximated this function using this MLP. So the cool thing is now we could ask the MLP for uh, data in between what we've already done. So let's say call this x2 equals torch dot line space from negative 1 to 1. Before we use 20 values, but let's say we want to do 200 values. So we want to better approximate what's going on. Just like before, we're going to have to make this into a batch format. So I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. X2, take all the dimensions and add one. Then I'm going to approximate here. Oops. 
x to be no, my naming is not the best too y2 prime dot squeeze make sure we detach it and then we can do something similar to this okay we want to keep our true values we're going to take x2 right here. So all we've done is done basically just add more points. You can see even when we add more points, it's able to approximate going between my points that I had before. So you can see that it's actually approximating the function pretty well, which is, which is what we want. So that's the basic idea on how we optimize something. It's not necessarily limited to optimizing neural networks. You could use this for all sorts of optimization methods. And Torch just makes it super easy to calculate those gradients, which can be super helpful. Thanks for watching.